Before we got going, Bill, I was telling you that we've been talking a lot about it on uh, Bloomberg Radio today. We had folks on from Carnival, how they're using virtual reality yeah. to kind of give you tours of some of their different cruise lines. It's more than just games, isn't it? Oh, for sure. And it's in the next six months, the consumer angle is going to be very well covered because we have a lot of entrants coming to the market. But it's the enterprise play. I mean, how is it used beyond gaming, beyond entertainment, beyond communication? That's really the fascinating. How do we use it for healthcare? How do we use it for marketing? How do we use it for field service, customer service? So it's the enterpriseification, not the consumerization play that I think is going to actually drive adoption in the next 18 to 24 months. And I think it's, it's also interesting to see you know, what those use cases will be. Indeed, uh, I think there are open questions as to how much people can actually tolerate the experience, whether they'll use it for immersive gameplay or it might just be too much and too exhausting to do that. There have been studies that have suggested that. And so I wonder what the business implications can be. What do you imagine sort of the first business implications, the non-entertainment business implications for virtual reality will yeah, be? Yeah, of course. So for virtual reality, we're seeing a lot around uh, training and education. So how can we simulate either an industrial company and have Having a, a machine that would take up an entire room and the safety element is very important. How do you actually get people up to speed to be able to do servicing around it? Or just be able to help do uh, either presentation, customer service, things that it just takes reps to be able to do instead of having executive coaches or have to deploy people in the field. You can simulate that in a pretty controlled, safe environment and kind of up the talent angle, be able to, to ramp up education and entertainment uh, versus what we have with... But, but which industries, I guess? What, well, what do you think is more specific? Well, so it's, uh, it's, my overall mantra is every company is a technology company, so we're seeing it across the board. We're seeing it in uh, a lot in oil and gas and training. Uh, early on, we're huh. seeing it in manufacturing. We're seeing it in, in a little bit uh, different use cases in uh, financial services. When you move into more augmented reality on how do we do uh, customer augmentation service out in the field. So it's an interesting mix. Uh, you know, I, I spent some time at Caterpillar, and they were using virtual reality to kind of, before they built some of their you know big machines, to kind of get a feel of what the co cockpit feels like uh, and how it's going to work. Who's going to be the biggest players? Is it Facebook? Who is it? Do we know yet? Well, the interesting is you move beyond the consumer play. It, the consumerization would say one of those players that we're going to see come out in the next six months has to kind of dominate the ecosystem. With the enterprise play, it's less about we have to wait for any one winner to emerge before we start making investment. And so the, the tipping point, what we see is there's pretty bounded use cases. You can have immediate value where you're going to wait for the broader, the products to evolve, the categories to emerge, the players, the winners to, I wish I had a crystal ball to say exactly who to, <laughs> who to bet on. Well, do you uh, have any idea, though, when that tipping point happens? Well, we think in the next six to, we basically say our tech trends are the next 18 to 24 months. I think this one's closer. We wow. typically say Horizon 1.5. Yeah. This one is, is more like the Horizon 0.75 and 1 because we're seeing those investments already. And the beautiful thing about in an enterprise space, we don't have to have the multi-platform worked out of all the different use cases, potential places is going to evolve to that the consumer buyer is going to expect. For the enterprise, we just need one you know, tackling uh, literally tackling uh, how do we make our people out doing field service on an oil rig better. That's just something that that in itself can justify the investment as we wait for the broader market to kind of mature. Just imagine virtual reality and drones kind of working um, together. Well, that's Seriously. The that's the extension. One of yeah. the trends we have is about autonomic platforms. It's a nice that kind of mixes together because we see this as we more and more of work becomes automated and it plays directly into this. I mean, how do we reimagine business. And if there's one takeaway from the entire report, it's that every company is a technology company at its core. And so how and does does the expense really matter much when we're talking about enterprise? I mean, of course, expense always matters, but I think about the fact that, you know, uh, uh, flight simulators cost millions of dollars each, so maybe this will end up being a lot cheaper for a lot of companies that are doing things where they can actually see a real reward. Well, both, both sides of it, Corey, is exactly right. So the, 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 the positive business case is so apparent, it's driving experimentation and exploration today. And, and the overall, what the impact, the value that it's actually returning, uh, it makes it so it's a no-brainer. Um, hey, companies have been reluctant, though, to do CapEx right now and, and certainly have volatile environment got 15 seconds for you will they see the opportunities here and spend well yeah, and it's, and it's a matter of, there's a combination of these, is how do we retool all of the underlying underpinnings of IT? How do we get more out of the investments that we've made in the past? And how do we use things like augmented virtual reality, Internet of Things, really? to drive innovation and growth? 